Hi, my friend Scott Young here with some hope for living. We are in a journey, a study, stories, stories uh, from the life of Jesus. 21 days with Jesus and thanks for being a part of our journey. And we really pray that as we look at the stories of Jesus, he not only inspires us and instructs us, but he fills us with the light of God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And if you're jumping on, as Michael just has, welcome. The story that we're looking at today comes from Cana, up by Galilee. And it's in John chapter 2, verses 11, no, verses 1 through 11. And there was a wedding going on, and people loved Jesus enough to invite him to their family weddings. They not only invited Jesus, they had Jesus' uh, mother, Mary, was there. Jesus' disciples were there. And the wedding ran into a problem. Now, weddings in Jesus' day were, they were big things. Not just an afternoon or an evening. It would be a week-long celebration. And uh, Jesus was there. Mary was there. The disciples were there. And the wedding ran out of wine. Now, that would have been a huge social uh, stigma to have a party to invite guests and then to run out of wine so there's a conversation that takes place between Mary and Jesus and Mary and the servants that were trying to solve this dilemma and I love the advice that Mary gives to the servants she points them to Jesus and she says whatever he says that's what you should do that's good advice today whatever Jesus says. That's what we should do. Hey, Tom Demery, good to see you. Randy, Hella, good to see you. Julie, up in Canada. Welcome. And let me say, whatever Jesus says, that's what we should do. Well, Jesus feels a little put on the spot. He looks around. There's, there's six containers, large containers, uh, that would hold 20 to 30 gallons of water. And he says, okay, Here's what I want you to do. Fill the vessels up with water. Now, did that make sense to the natural mind? Our need is for wine, and you're telling us to get water. Remember, whatever Jesus says, that's what we should do. When we read his word, we put our faith in the words of Jesus. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to our natural mind, but we still continue to trust Jesus. Uh, I'll just give you some advice. Jesus knows best. And they fill the vessel, six of them, multiple gallons of water. And uh, as soon as they dip in and pour it out and take it to the, to the uh, one in charge of the party, it was turned into wine. Uh, there was a poem that uh, I read once, and it says that the water recognized its creator and blushed red. Now they receive the wine and they go, wow, this is the best wine of the whole party. Usually we save the worst wine for the end of the party. We have the best wine at the beginning, but you have saved the best for the last. And here are some things that, uh, that speak to me from this story. One is that Jesus is our provider. When we have a need, we look to him. And he provides more and better. Listen to those words, more and better. He supplied more than they needed, multiple gallons and better. You can trust him as the provider. If you have a need in your life today, trust in the Lord. Jesus is our provider. The other thing I noticed from this story of Jesus is that he cares about the little things of our lives. A social slight at a wedding. And he's concerned about it. He's concerned about big issues, of course. But is he concerned about small issues in your life? Issues may nobody else may even know about or think about? Absolutely. Jesus cares. He knows how many hairs on your head or the lack thereof. And he cares about us. And as we come together, know he's our provider. And he provides big, 
When we need that, we receive it by faith, and he provides for the smallest details of our life. So don't ever hold something back from Jesus. Bring him everything that you have. The, the third thing I just noticed is that Jesus is the messenger, and the messenger is more important than the miracle. The story ends with these words, and his disciples believed in him. Sometimes we get caught up looking at the miracles. Let's keep our eyes on the messenger. Let's, let's keep our eyes on the source rather than on the supply. Let's keep our eyes fixed on Jesus today. As we take this journey of faith, I want to pray for you. Thanks for being a part. Pastor Wayne Blackburn praying for Victory Church this weekend. That it'll be incredible. Kim Goodson, thank you for praying with us. Grant Williams, good to see you. Bless you, Laura. Glad you're a part. We're going to pray right now. And we're going to ask. Just this will be a wonderful weekend. Whatever church is preaching the gospel, we pray that people that are far away from God will come into the family of God. We pray for revival in these days. And join us on this 21-day journey with Jesus. You can find uh, lessons we've already had on Facebook or on the church Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. But I just want to pray this blessing. Today, may it be a day that, Lord, we know you are our provider. And you provide more and better. You provide big and you even are interested in the smallest details of our life. I pray for those who are part, David, praying for you, John, Cheryl, and over in Greece, pray for you. May the Lord be with you and provide big and small. And may we always, Lord, have our priorities right. May we keep our eyes on the messenger, not get mystified by the miracles. May we keep our eyes on the source, not just what's supplied. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And I bless you in the strong name of Jesus. Of course, this weekend we're together with live services. It will be 6 o'clock this evening, 9 o'clock, and 11 o'clock tomorrow, and 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Many chances for you to tune in and receive hope and bless you. Hey, I bless you in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, you are blessed.